Welcome back to Learning Solidity. Now today's tutorial is only going to be a very basic lesson on polymorphism. Now I've incurred an inheritance before in a previous tutorial, which I'll leave a link for in the description box down below. Now polymorphism is essentially a way of being able to access and interact with an object where you don't know the explicit definition or implementation of that object. You simply know that the object derives from an object you do know. So in this case, so what I'm going to do is simply create an interface, which I'll know, and then I'll create various implementations of our interface, even extending it in certain other ways, and then create an array of that and show you a very basic um, interaction between the objects. Now this was something that came up on a discussion board, and uh, this is essentially the example of how I answered it. Now, essentially, what I had, or what I had to begin with, was a contract, and simply the contract was alphabet. Now, we're going to be interacting with an interface, and our interface is simply going to state letter. And it's going to be a very basic interface, which is going to be a function um, called n. It's going to be public, and returns a unit. And that's it, that's as basic as it is. So a whole concept is that we know that any time that we reference letter, we have a function called get n that returns a uint. Doesn't matter what it is, as long as it implements letter, we know that function exists. So in various ways, we can uh, sort of like create references to letter or create instances of letter. So let's first create a contract. Let's call a, let's say it is a letter. And that then requires a function called n make it for a bit which needs to be public and also returns a uint and that's as simple as it is so as long as now we return let's say one because it's the first letter of the alphabet we know that obviously the n exists in that case and we can call it now we can also expand this in a different way we can say that uh, contract c is a we don't actually need any functionality but c is still a derivative of letter so we can interact with that effectively as well now we can also create a third contract and call it so actually i'm going to call this one b and then call the last one c is also a letter and again we need a function implementation of function n make it public make it returns a uint and that simply return two Okay, so now we have C and A that both implement letter. B is actually an implementation of A, which also is an implementation of letter. And essentially everything we have there is an implementation of letter. Now we can even add some extra functionality to C. So function X um, that is public returns a string. And it returns X, should we say. So even though we're adding extra functionality to C, it's still a derivative of letter. It doesn't matter. In this case, X is never going to be affected or sort of brought into the sort of scope. So in our alphabet, what we're going to do is have an array of letters because we know obviously an alphabet has 26 letters. So let's call this uh, private and let's say letters. Now, what we're going to do is first do our own implementations of our alphabet. So let's do this in the constructor. So function alphabet, uh, make that uh, public. And then within our public constructor, what we're simply going to do is have letters dot push. Then we're going to have a new a uh, letters dot push and b. And finally, letters dot push and you see. Now as far as this uh, alphabet is concerned, we only have letters. We don't actually have A, B and C. It doesn't matter. And in fact, what I'm also going to do is address the other issue that he raised in that question, which was, am essentially I storing uh, addresses or objects when I actually create something like um, an array? Technically, you're storing references to an address. You're just basically stating that at this address, um, there is a contract which has all these constraints. That it's going to have um, an address of letters which are only going to have one function, it's called n. Beyond that, we don't know. We could potentially cast it to something else, but as far as we're concerned, we only know that the letter exists with one function. 
So we can also reference potentially pre-existing implementations as well. So let's say function um, uh, load remote. Let's say that's public. And then let's say letters dot push letter. Actually, I've missed the parameters as well. So let's say that we're going to be passing in three addresses, which we're going to assume is x, y, and z. So underscore r x address underscore address y, and then finally underscore address z. So we're just basically stating that we have three addresses, and we're just going to apply three implementations of letter, assuming that all these implementations are also going to adhere to the interface letter. So we should, well, we are assuming that the three contracts at x, y, and z implement letter all have a function x. Uh, all have a function n and we can interact with them in the same way. This is a great way for if you wanted to implement interact with a token for instance which you if you followed the ERC uh, 20 standards you know that it has that set of functionality and you can make all those calls to that contract. But for now I'm not going to load that because I haven't defined them and I haven't got obviously those addresses. So let's do the final uh, check on this. Like I said, we at this point, we have no concept of A, B, and C. We just simply have a concept of letters. So let's say, let's print letters. Let's say this is a public function, and that's about it. So all we're going to do is iterate over everything in letters. So let's create a for loop. Let's create a uint i, e, make it equal to zero. i is less than the letter. Oh, letters dot length and I increments on each loop. So all we're going to simply state is we need to create first an event so we can print this out. So event, let's call it um, printer, let's call it, so we can pass in one single uint. So in this case all we're doing is printer letters dot, oh sorry, brackets i dot n because we know that's the only function that exists there and when we call print letters because we're constructing this with three objects we are we should basically get the numbers coming out of this so a should be one b should be one because it extends a and c should be two so if i create our alphabet then simply call print letters i have a will be one B will be 1 and C is 2. And that is a very, very basic way of looking at polymorphism um, from a solidity point of view. Obviously, you haven't got the full implementation of polymorphism. We, you, you, People could argue you have, but you don't have, obviously have that sort of concept of generics, which, again, you could argue is not actually part of polymorphism. Um, but that, in a nutshell, is polymorphism within Solidity, or the best way that I could sort of explain polymorphism within Solidity. Now, if you found this video useful, give it a thumbs up. If you would like to any, ask any questions or leave any feedback, feel free to leave it in the comments box down below. And if you would like to keep up to date with all the videos I will be producing, uh, feel free to hit that subscribe button and you'll be notified when I release my next video. But until next time, I hope you found this useful. Good luck, and I will see you around.